if you're new to my channel, I am Elin, I'm a Norwegian, and this is my booktube channel, which is called Hidden in a Book. And I also have an Instagram account where I post about books, of course, because I'm all about books. And on my Instagram account, I asked people if they wanted to see a Q&I on my channel, and they wanted that. And I asked my followers to ask me questions, and they did. And I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can. So let's not just well, let's just like, like, you know, get to it. And I'll try answer these questions. So the first question is, have you ever been in a reading funk with uh, no motivation and how did you get over it? Uh, I think when I kind of been in a reading slump, as I say, uh, it has been more of a um, time thing. So I've been like really tired and really busy and doing other things. So what I've done to kind of get back to reading, I can't really de to remember being in like a proper reading slump. Um, I, I just like, I just pick up a book and read, I guess. I think that's the only thing I can do or rest or do something else for a little bit and then get back to the reading. Uh, I think that's my answer. I, I don't really know if you... If you've been like in a really bad reading slump and how did you get over it? What what did you do to kind of get over the reading slump? Uh, and the next question was, did you have anyone to inspire you to read as a kid? Uh, and then that the answer to that question is my parents. Uh, my parents read for my brother and I when we grew up. I can't really remember a life without books. We went to the library a lot. Um, and even my dad, he, he used to kind of make up stories. Uh, so he, we had like this chicken one and so on. Uh, there were an awful lot of chickens after a while. We like small stories that he made up. Uh, and how good they were, I don't know because I can't remember, but I remember as a kid, I loved them. And uh, also, uh, my parents read to us, at least to me, uh, even long, quite a while after I could read myself, because it was nice to be read for by a parent. So I guess that's my, my inspiration for reading, as well as going to the library and going to the library frequently. Uh, next question... Uh, what's your favorite guilty pleasure movie? Hmm. I don't know if I have a guilty pleasure movie or film. Because, you know, um, a guilty pleasure, how I see it, is to be, supposed to be something that make, that make you kind of feel a little bit guilty. Even though you kind of enjoy it. Uh, and I'm not sure if I have one. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, maybe Eat, Pray, Love. Um, I've read the book, which is actually quite good. It's um, it's kind of a memoir. Uh, uh, and it talks about places. And I think I like the film. Not so much because of what it's about. I don't think the, the film is half as good as, as the book by far. It's not a great film by far. But I kind of enjoy seeing like places like Italy and, and India and, and like Bali and like these places. Um, and I've been to Rome and I've been to Bali. So I, I, had, I had been to Rome before I read the book, but I hadn't been to Bali before I read the book. So I was quite uh, excited to go to Bali when I went. And that is two years ago now. Can you believe it? That was awesome. And I'm not even sure if I had gone to Bali if it wasn't for that book. Next question. What is a bookish goal you have for 2020 besides a book's read goal? <clears throat> and if you've seen my previous videos, you would already know this because I have a whole video on goals for 2020. 
as well as like what I read in 2019, but I also talk about my reading goals for 2020. So there's like a whole load of them. It's not just, just to read like 50 books a year, like I have every year, but there's like so and so many Norwegian books, uh, so, many, so and so many young, young adult books written by Norwegian authors, things like that. So I would just simply ask you to go and watch that film or that video film that, you know, Norwegian had. Well, <laughs> go and see the f video I made with my goals and stuff. I can link it uh, in the description box so you can find it more easily. Next question. What was your childhood dream or ambition? It's like, what would you want to become? And this might sound strange to a lot of people, but I have never been very ambitious or goal-driven, to be honest. I have been a very impulsive person. I've done uh, things on impulse. I probably known more of the things I didn't want, like I never wanted kids. I've never had an urge to get married. Uh, even though I, I have actually been engaged at one point, <clears throat> uh, though, though that didn't happen, uh, the marriage, I mean. Uh, and at the moment, um, I think it's, I'm not against getting married, but for me, having a wedding is kind of not something I want at all, especially not a big wedding. And being with an Irish person, yeah, so so I don't think I'll ever get married. And to be honest, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, I have ended up becoming a librarian. I would... Not sure if that was my dream as a kid, because I have seen books from when I was a kid and I have obviously been playing library. Um, <clears throat> if it was a dream or in an ambition, not really. Um, but I kind of figured out that I that's what I wanted to do. So I that was like the, the one year when I applied to library and information science, I was like, uh, I was in a job uh, that I didn't really enjoy that much and I was sitting in a public library uh, when I was visiting a friend in Trondheim and I was sitting in the li uh, library there and I was thinking, why, why am I not a librarian? I think that would be the perfect job for me. So I basically quit my job or handed in my notice and then applied for library and information science at the university college in that order and fortunately I had no problems getting in so no I'm a librarian and I work quite a lot of places I have had positions library librarian position quite a few places but I just as I said in my um another video I I recently changed jobs or like first of January and <clears throat> and I actually think that I have landed my dream job, which is very, very, very good. Uh, I, ha, has it been a dream? Mm, maybe not in the beginning, the last last couple of years, maybe, maybe. But I'm very happy to be where I am at the moment. And I'm looking forward to working there. Um, I think it's, it's going to be a good job. Uh, Right, so next questions. Have you ever read any Russian authors like Tolstoy, Pushkin, Cheskov, etc.? Yes, I have. Um, uh, of course, it has been a limited amount because there's just so much time in the world. Um, but I think that my favorite that I read is Anna Karenina. Uh, <clears throat> but I wish I kind of enjoyed it even more than I did because uh, I thought it was really, really good like in the beginning and then there was like came to a point and I was thinking it should have ended here and the rest should have been like cut out of the story because it didn't really add that much to it. Um, so yes, I've read Russian authors uh, and Anna Karenina was my favorite. I also read 
uh the gambler by is that by tolstoy or is it someone else i'm really bad with remembering authors and titles to be honest and you might think that oh but she's a librarian how can she not remember but the thing is i use searching tools so if i remember a title i can search and find the author but i don't really have the uh, time right now because i'm filming this video but anyway uh, the Gambler, and I think that was probably my least favorite. I, to be honest, I didn't like it that much. And I even have a review on that on this channel, but it's quite old. I can try to link, link to it, Don't Build It Love, um, just to, to, to kind of give you, like, you can see what I thought at the moment. I don't remember what I said at all. It's been a few years. I'm not even sure when I made it, but I think I was still living up north, so it might have been 10, 2011 or thereabouts, so quite a while ago. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what's a book you're looking forward to in 2020 or 2021? Um, uh, I think I will have to answer Siri Peterson's or C.D. Peterson's new book. Uh, it might come out this autumn. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I also know that Neil Gaiman is working on a new book that is supposed to be a follow-up to Neverwhere, but I'm not sure if it's really, really happening, uh, if that comes out in 2020 or 2021, I would love it. Uh, that would be like something, a book that I would really look forward to. Uh, but also, but yeah, but C.D. Peterson's new book is definitely something I'm looking forward to. Um, <clears throat> I'm also hoping to see more books from Emma Newman. Um, I know she's been having... She's having had life thrown out in, uh, in her face lately, so last year. So I know she's been kind of struggling with her things. Uh, she's been open about it on social media. Uh, it's not a secret. Uh, so I'm just hoping she will get better uh, when life quiets down and that she will be able to write again. And I would see, love to see more books in the Planet Falls series, maybe in 2021. Who knows? I'm not sure if there will be anything in 2020, though. So yeah, uh, as you can see, um, I'm kind of going like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but hey, uh, all of a sudden there's a book that like pops up and I get, get excited. Oh, and I also know that uh, Elin Victoria Unsta is coming out with a new book this autumn, which I'm looking forward to. to. I still haven't read her latest book, which is Brodip. And I'm very sorry, Elin, if you're watching this. Uh, it's on my to-be-read. <laughs> so, yeah, my name sister, author, name sister. I, I'm very sorry I haven't read your book yet, but I will at some point, I promise. So, next question. Oh, dare me. What's your bookish dream job? Uh, librarian, hello? Hello, I'm a librarian. Why should I dream about a bookish job that I have? So I guess I can say being a librarian is my bookish dream job and I have my bookish dream job. Yeah. No, no, it's a good question, but I'm I'm not a student. I mean, I'm 45. Come on. Uh, so what's the best biography you have you ever read? And <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't really read that many. I have uh, read a few like memoirs, um, but I don't really read that many biographies. I read uh, Becoming last year, which I enjoyed. Was it the best book I read that year? Not by far. Um, I read a book called Boy Erased a while ago, a couple of years maybe more ago. <laughs> that was really good. That's, but that's more like a uh, memoir as well. Uh, I, I, I am a loss, to be honest. I'm not quite sure what to answer to that because mm, biographies, I don't write 
read that many of them. I It's not that I don't read nonfiction, because I do read nonfiction, but I tend to read other types of nonfiction, not biographies. Um, so, yeah. Uh, your favorite book from your childhood. And this might not come as a surprise if you follow me for a while. Uh, my favorite book uh, as a child, I think, was Anna Green Gables. Uh, I really loved that. I also loved The Secret Garden. Uh, or Anna Green Gables would be On the Frapircule. Uh, and The Secret Garden would be Den Hemmeli Hagen, because I read them in Norwegian. I, <clears throat> I read a lot of books, um, but I didn't read them like over and over again, as far as I can remember. Uh, of course, there were like Maria Gripa, the, she had this, um, it's a quartet of books uh, that was really good. Uh, Shigenover Steinbenken and so on, it's called in Norwegian. Um, so I really like them. Uh, there was also a uh, book called Jeg tar chansen by Ulf Stark that I really liked. And as a teen, I really, really liked The Outsiders, which was actually by S.E. Heinten. And it was actually my first English book that I bought for myself and read in the English. And I read it over again and over again. And I think I can thank a lot to that book. I thank that book a lot uh, for, for my English because uh, I learned a lot from reading that book over and over again because... I might have not understood like that much the first time and then then I did um, more. I, I kind of understood more and more for every each time I read it. So so yeah, so I really enjoyed that. Um, favorite spots to read at home and outside. Uh, I am pretty much a person who can read everywhere. Um, reading at home, I prefer to sit on the in the sofa, uh, or have my book with my breakfast at the at the dinner table, uh, or in bed. Uh, but there's not that many spots inside at home where I can read. Um, outside it would be the balcony, but it's not really that time of year at the moment, so I can't really sit outside. Um, I also like sitting in the park to read. I can, I enjoy reading on the train. I like sitting at the cafe and read or at a restaurant if I am having a meal by myself. Uh, I said sitting in the park, didn't I? Um, so yeah, um, I, I am not picky when it comes to sitting places to read. I can read pretty much everywhere like i can stand in a queue and read and that would be good uh uh and next question is a book you recommend to everyone and to be honest there is not one um and the reason for that is probably because of my position um what i do for a living uh we don't do something called a reference interview when someone asks you for a book recommendation and that is kind of very, very close to my heart because I don't think every book is for everyone. I think that some people would not like a book. So I don't want to kind of say, oh, you should read the book. You would love it. Uh, and then they would come and say, but I didn't. And I had people coming back to me asking me for book recommendations because I have helped them. Uh, finding a book that they really liked um, uh, because they kind of think that oh she likes to read the same thing as I do and I might but I read a lot of different kinds of books and I like a lot of dif different kinds of books so there is not one book that I would recommend to everyone uh, what books made you the reader you are today and I can't really name books. I think it must just, I just have to say that the amount of books I read as I grew up, I loved reading. I I remember keeping lists of what I read <laughs> even as a kid. I had a friend who lived in another city and we kind of compared. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember. We were, might have been like 12 or something around that age, early teens maybe. 
and I read like 100 books a year. I've read more than, than I do now. Uh, but yeah. So there is not one book or like a certain amount of mount, certain titles that I can refer to as what like kind of made me into the reader I am today. And maybe that's kind of answers why I kind of read so varied today and I like so many different kinds of books because I did read a lot of all the different kinds of books when I grew up. So I think uh, rather than what books made you the reader you are today would be uh, what if there, uh, there was anything that made me the reader I am today, I would say the public library because it gave me like free access to lots of books. And I was really, really, I read lots and loved reading and I kind of, I can't really remember a life without books. I know people talk about like how they kind of recently started reading books but I that's that wasn't me I I kind of always been a reader I remember sitting I mean my mom's lap uh, and we were like reading the newspaper I think I must have been like four or five years old probably five um <clears throat> and there was like a little comic strip uh with Winnie the Pooh uh like one just one strip and I was looking at it. I can't remember what I was, what exactly what I was reading, uh, but I kind of like put the letters to together. And mind you, this was before I started school because um, we start, uh, we not start started school later in our way, um, especially when I grew up because uh, things have changed. The whole school system in our way is like totally different from from when I went to school and I kind of, it can be a bit confusing, even to me. Anyway, uh, so I would remember sitting in her lap and kind of looking at the letters and then kind of go, went, oh, and then I like, all of a sudden the words started to make sense. And that was like a really like, wow, moment for me. And I kind of cracked the read code of reading. And that was a big thing, huge thing for me. That's why I remember it so clearly. It's like not a lot of other things from that age that I remember that clearly. That as well as counting uh, for some reason, uh, but especially the whole reading thing. So, so yeah, always been a reader. Uh, where am I? Oh, what books? May I? Oh, that's the same question. Um, what's the first book you remember reading? I don't know. I I don't. Uh, I read a lot of books and I don't remember one specific book so that was kind of my first book. Sorry. <laughs> That's a very bad answer, but it's the truth. So last question, uh, which is your favorite land and why? And I guess that means country. Uh, <clears throat> and it's hard to answer one specific thing to that, that as well. Um, because I, there are many countries that I love. Uh, I love Iceland. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, place. Um, it's like the nature and everything, and also like Reykjavik is such a really nice city. I love it. Uh, also, um, I. I could say Indonesia, uh, but I've only been to Bali, so I can't really say that I've been to Indonesia per se. Well, I have, for obviously, but I've only been to Bali. But I really, really love Bali. Uh, I have a big thing for India. Uh, anyone who follows me on Instagram should know by this by now that I have a big thing for India. I have never, ever been there I am going at some point. I'm not sure when I'll be able to go because it's expensive and time consuming. And there's also a thing with safety and being a woman and things like that. Um, so yeah, um, I love Ireland. Um, I've been to Ireland a lot. Uh, I love uh, the UK uh, with all, all, all its foul faults. <laughs> Uh, I've lived in Cardiff for a while. I've been to Scotland quite a lot. I even have my work second year work placement in the south of Scotland. Um, I have friends there. Uh, England also. It's nice, especially London. I love London. 
Um, so yeah, uh, I also love Norway where I live. I'm a Norwegian. I <clears throat> I know it might sound a bit a little bit nationalistic. We're not supposed to be that, you know. But still, I love my country. Um, it's a good place to live. I feel very privileged. Um, there's a lot of good things about Norway and living here, to be sure. Um, I I know that I am fortunate. I can pretty much, even though I'm a woman, I can I can vote. Uh, I can decide whether I want to have kids or not. Uh, um, I can work. I can have a full time job. I I if I wanted to be single, I could. If I wanted to marry a woman, I could do that. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of freedom and it feels good. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Anyway, so that was my Q&A. Uh, it's getting a bit longer, I can see, and I hope you kind of enjoyed it. I hope, I hope my answers weren't too stupid or bad or, you know, boring. Um, so yeah, I'll, um, I'm not quite sure when I'll be managed to do my next video, but I hope it will be soon. And I think that's it for now. I am hoping to do my, oh yeah, I hoping to do my 2019 favorite books in my next videos. Uh, I know it's been a long, like we're like far into January. Uh, who knows if I manage to do it before January is open or open over, but Hey, uh, better later than never is something we say in Norway. So I am planning on making a favorites of 2019 video and that will probably be, be my next video. And until then, oh, I might do something else before that. I'm not quite sure. Ah, uh, yeah, I also have a reading long video. Uh, I'll link to that below as well. I would really get more of you to look into that. That would be great. So yeah, that's it for now and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!